it just that sense of justice that, that you have? With a, to refresh some of the background, you were a professor of um, sociology. Sociology that might have something to do with it. Do you think? My interest in sociology yeah. had what, something what to do with it. What you to put Fiji together? That's what I'm. Okay, that is yet. the original question, isn't yeah. it? I better get back to it. That's okay. We can just go back and forth. So. It all began, I suppose, uh, uh, when the speaker that I was talking about said, "I can tell you things about your constitution that you didn't know." Mr. Yeah. Mr. Beckman made these remarks. Now, Mr. Red Beckman is known to be a tax <laughs> resistor. And at the time I was listening to him, I was making so little money that I think I paid a dollar seventy-four in taxes that year, and so I didn't really care. Yeah. I mean, it isn't like people that are paying thousands and thousands yeah. who have to care a lot. I thought, well, that's great. If I ever get rich, yeah. then Look maybe I'll need to know what Mr. Yeah. Beckman has to say. So I set it aside. I said. He was saying basically that a jury in a tax case can say, we think the tax law is bad and therefore we're not going to use it. Yeah. Or the tax law shouldn't be applied to this guy this time because... It's voluntary. <laughs> it's supposed to be voluntary. Yeah. and he, you know, the, the jury can, yeah. can make a decision in any way it wants for any reason it wants. Yeah. And so Red Beckman was saying, if you can convince the jury that the tax laws are invalid, they can acquit you, and just like prohibition, the word will soon get back to right. the lawmakers that the people aren't going to put up with this tax anymore, and then in order to stay in office, they will change the law. That's right. And that's the way our democracy is supposed to work. It's the only real handle. Yeah. It, not like voting. Verdicts are the only real handle. Jury verdicts are the only real handle we have in our government to guide its behavior, to control its behavior. Uh, voting for people, even if, even if there isn't vote scam, the people that you put in there can do whatever they want whatever once they're they in there. You yeah. can't control them with your vote. It's a one-time deal, see? So I was very impressed with that, but as I said, I set it aside, mm -hmm. back burner in my brain, because I affiliated the idea with the idea of resisting taxes, and I wasn't paying any. Mm -hmm. So why bother? It wasn't until 1987 which was like nine years after I'd heard Mr. Beckman speak, I was in a completely different situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I was organizing an initiatives fair. Now, I don't know if they ever do this sort of thing in, in the state of Washington, and maybe they don't do it anywhere else, but I decided that it would be a really good thing to bring all of the people in, in Montana who are doing ballot initiatives together under one roof for one day and have them explain their ballot issue and then we could all argue about each other's ballot issues and maybe point out some good spots and some, you know, uh, some mistakes or some ideas and improve the ballot issues that would appear on the, on the ballot in Montana. And one guy got up and he said, I think that in all courts of law, the judge should explain to the jury that they are judges of the law as well as of the fact. And it was the idea that he was talking about all courts that That's got my attention, not just tax court, yeah. all courts. And suddenly I realized this could mean that every bad law on our books, and we got millions of them, yeah, could from, come from, under from, jury judgment. From what I understand, there's over two million laws uh, equal to the amount of people in prison at this time. Yeah. And that's a good statistic. Yeah. We have the highest number of people in prison in the world, mm -hmm. and we got probably the most laws per person. Per person, yeah, because... In the world. Yeah. And we're not getting anywhere passing more laws, and most of the laws are put into effect by special interest groups. Yeah. And so a lot of times they're not very good. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've gone to legislatures and made this argument, and they'll actually, to my face, say, oh, we don't pass any bad laws, all of our laws are good laws. And I say, you mean to say you voted yes for every law in existence? Mm -hmm. Well, I voted against some. Well, then I said they must be they're some bad ones, good. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the point is, in somebody's perspective, practically every law has problems. Mm -hmm. You get down to the basic laws against, you know, murder, arson, rape, burglary, you know, where there's mm -hmm. victims and there's harm between people. We all agree on those. Mm -hmm. Those laws, if they were to be discussed by a jury, everybody would agree. Mm -hmm. But the farther you get away from the basics, the more disagreement there is. Some people think marijuana should be legal, some don't. Some think abortion should be illegal, some don't. Some think that 
you know, we should have to fasten our seat belts. Some people disagree. Mm -hmm. You know, but we're getting farther and farther away from the basics of morality. I was uh, watching a, a video that um, someone gave me, and uh, I didn't realize that, but it said that the United States was founded on the Ten Commandments, which would be Christian principles. Um, now, I'm one of the people that's guilty um, of, uh, because I, so lots of times, well, most of the time, I do not celebrate holidays. And I get real irritated when I can't go to Denny's on Christmas if I, if I so choose. And uh, so I researched it one time, and it showed that 30% of America at this time, only 30% is Christian, and the rest of the people make up the rest of it. And I found it interesting that um, the founding fathers, I guess, had no clue that all these other people was going to come, but the laws themselves as a whole are good because, um, you know, if you don't steal, well, you don't have, mm -hmm. then you don't have a possession charge and so on and so on. If we could get back to the basics, like you said, we could get rid of the rest of them. The basics are imbued in every religion. Yeah. And the founding fathers weren't all Christians. But, but that's, that's, that's what the, what the old textbook but, shows. I but, just researched yeah, that before. But the morality is the same. It's the same, yeah. Yeah, I, there's hardly any place on earth where it's okay to go you know, murder people or steal right. or kill. I mean, uh, there, you, how long could you last as a society if you right. let that kind of behavior go unpunished? So the basics are the same everywhere. Why do we need two million laws? That's exactly my point. By principle, you know, stick to the basics and forget it. Mm -hmm. And see, juries can do that. They're a remarkable institution. There are 12 ordinary people discussing the basics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They might say, well, this technically this guy is guilty, but come on, mm -hmm. you know. And that's the whole idea is for them to use their hearts and consciences to temper mm -hmm. the exact letter of the law so that the result is a just verdict, a verdict mm -hmm. they can be, go home and be proud of. Be happy with, yeah. So to get back to your basic question, once this guy said we need an initiative to where the Jurors have to be told in every court, mm -hmm. every time, that you can vote according to your conscience, that you can judge the law as well as the evidence. Mm -hmm. Once he said that, it was kind of like my brain popped open again. It that was nine up, years yeah. after I'd heard Red Beckman, but I said, you know, this would do so much good because yeah. it would put the people of the country back in charge of the government and its laws instead of the government being in charge of the people and using laws as clubs. Yeah. I said, that's the country that the founders envisioned, is where the government was servants, mm -hmm. not masters. And that's the country I want to live in, and here's a way to do it. I need to form an organization to educate all the people of this country that when they're sitting on a jury, if they just listen to their hearts and consciences when they're discussing and reaching a verdict, we can keep the government behaving itself and serving yeah. us instead of controlling us. So we, uh, from the very start, FIJA, or the Fully Informed Jury Association, mm -hmm. from the very start, it was an educational association. The whole idea was to educate. Because we can't go in and change the laws. We can't, yeah. Uh, we're not a lobby group. We don't have any money, for one thing, you know. I, we're yeah. not a legislature. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to get to that. Because now sometimes some people have, um, uh, well, I wanted to get sort in a roundabout way to Laura. Uh, Laura Creho. Creho eventually. Yeah. But so so did did the um, did the the future activist? That's the. Um, that's our newsletter. That's the newsletter. Did that start immediately, or did that come later? The friends are pretty familiar. Oh, actually, um, uh, the future activist was yeah, I'll, I'll published. It that was one of the first things we did. The very first issue came out in the fall of 1989. 89. The so. organization was only two months old. Mm -hmm. It didn't look like this. It was. It looked like one of those down and dirty things you get on the street corner from yeah. political activists. Yeah. Uh, with fairly clumsy and crude, mm -hmm. but the basic points were in it, and it's, we've expanded it now uh, with all kinds of, of, uh, A lot of news and here. events uh, yeah. that were not possible then. Mm -hmm. Actually, our show has been there a couple of times thanks to. I've yeah, I've heard this. In fact, I've watched that show. Yeah, it's it's so. an excellent uh, presentation of what we do. Here you see this says amazingly successful CLE. A CLE for the uh, audience here is a continuing legal education seminar, mm -hmm. CLE. And it's a seminar which lawyers attend in order mm -hmm. to get credit 
for continuing education so mm -hmm. that they can continue to practice law by certifying Mm -hmm. their uh, their license to practice. Yeah, like a teacher. They like have to teacher. take a class every year to get recertified. Exactly. Okay. And so this is for lawyers. And what we're teaching is what I'm talking about on your show. Mm -hmm. They don't teach in law school that juries have this kind of power and responsibility to judge the law and use their conscience. They, te they tell the lawyers the opposite. Mm -hmm. Well, in some cases, uh, and, and here again, I'm more, f I'm more uh, familiar with federal cases where the judge will actually say, you must follow the law as I dictate. Yeah, so, that's standard practice. And, it's, mm -hmm. and I don't know what else to call it, but it's not the truth. Oh. When the judge says that, you're not getting the facts. He's, he or she is lying to you. The case on which they get away with that lie is called Sparf and Hansen versus United States, mm -hmm. 1895. I won't go into the details of the case, but the upshot is that the ju uh, a split, a very, it was a, a very bitter split court, this was not a unanimous decision, decided that it doesn't, uh, is, isn't necessary for the judge to tell the jury about its power to, to use or to vote according to conscience. Mm -hmm. uh, and it certainly isn't necessary for the judge to uh, acquaint them with this power. With the power, yeah. And, and, and in fact, the judge has the power to keep the attorney from telling them either. That's right, yeah, Tom and Patricia, they were really wonderful how they went through the whole process step by step, you know, what if and how we handle it was wonderful. But there was a woman in Colorado, her name is Laura, Laura Creho. Creho, and she sort of didn't know what to do, didn't she? We had never heard of Laura Creho when we first heard the news about yeah. what happened to her. Uh, she's one of millions of people maybe like your viewers mm -hmm. who got a copy of the newspaper or got a copy mm -hmm. of the brochure. You're, I think you're going to show the true or false brochure on yeah. your camera at mm -hmm. some point. These are bits of literature that we like to hand out around courthouses, mm -hmm. sometimes on university campuses, sometimes at fairs we open a booth and hand them out there. In, in any event, we've handed out two or three million pieces of literature explaining about the power of the jury mm -hmm. and its responsibility to judge the law. Well, Laura Creho somehow got a hold of one of these. She's just an ordinary person working at, the, at a university as a technician uh, there in Boulder, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And she was called for jury duty in a minor drug trial in her own county and went down there and they asked a bunch of questions to seat the jurors. They realized toward the end they were running out of, of jurors. They had mm -hmm. excluded so many. That's right. From sitting on this jury, they got down to where there was only one or two left, and one of them was Laura Creho. And Laura um, was only asked questions like, well, you've heard the previous testimony and the previous right. questions in here. Is there anything in there uh, that, that, you know, you heard that would disqualify you? Right. And so she said, no. And they said, well, then you're on. They That's didn't right. really ask her very many anything questions. That, they yeah, were they in a hurry. They didn't go to the proper board there. Is that how you pronounce Voir it? Vardier. Vardier, close enough. There was, that's very yeah. close, closer than most lawyers get it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, so they didn't really go through the really process. They didn't really give her the full her, yeah. treatment. Um, <laughs> and so they put her on the jury. So she sits through this trial, and she decides that there really isn't enough evidence to convict the lady. You know, the lady said, well, I didn't know it was in my car or my purse. My boyfriend must have put the drugs there or something. You know, whatever it was, she convinced Laura. And Laura voted not guilty. The rest of the jury was angry at her, and she said, well, I'll tell you what. Um, I happen to know that if in our heart of hearts we don't want to convict this person because we think she's going to get too much punishment or that it really shouldn't be a crime, she should be rehab go to a drug rehab center, but no. she... She shouldn't go to jail. Any, any reason we want to. If we don't want to convict her, we don't have to. Because I read this stuff about jury power, and yeah. I can assure you that we can do what we think is the right thing in here, mm -hmm. even if there's enough evidence to convict her. So are any of you going to join me in voting not guilty? Yeah. Nobody it's... would. So she hung the jury. She was the lone seagull. Yeah. So Laura Creho walks out of that jury room pretty frustrated. She'd hung the jury. She'd done what she felt was the right thing to do. Yeah. 
She wasn't convinced by the evidence in the first place. She also felt that the punishment was going to be too great. It is because of the mandatory sentencing. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. It was going to lock this poor lady up forever. Yeah, forever.